In Yosemite National Park, you can find mountains, waterfalls, nature of unspeakable beauty, and death. Since the park's foundations, it became grave to around 1,300 people. Nevertheless, the locals believe the number of victims is far greater because some people vanish without a trace. But why does Yosemite have the highest disappearance rate out of all American parks? Do night crawlers have anything to do with this? And what can really kill you in Yosemite Park? Yosemite National Park spans over 3,000 square kilometers of practically wild nature in the state of California, USA. Every year, the park is visited by around 4 million people. Yet, not everyone makes it out of the park alive. Yosemite is among the nation's top three deadliest parks. On average, around 12 to 18 visitors die there per year. And this statistic keeps growing. Among the park killers, three leaders are topped by the trivial yet the most dangerous one, death through falling. Rock climbers often fall in Yosemite, which is exactly what happened at the end of September of 2023 to a Korean rock climber school instructor. The man with his group of students was descending from a steep rock named El Capitan. But for some unknown reason, he fell to his death. Some thrill seekers risk their lives, even in violation of the park rules. That's what the legend of rock climbing, Dean Potter, did. He was an innovator and a real enthusiast of the extreme, performing incredible ascents and stunts. One time, he even did a parachute jump with his dog. But an attempt to do a flight in Yosemite Park in May of 2015 became deadly for him. Potter and his friend, Graham Hunt, decided to jump off Taft Point. This ledge towers over the valley at approximately 1,070 meters. Still, jumping with a parachute is prohibited in Yosemite Park, so base jumpers do it at night so that nobody sees them. That's exactly what Potter and Hunt did, jumping off Taft Point in the twilight. Potter's girlfriend, Jennifer Rapp, who was accompanying the extreme enthusiast, heard two explosion-like sounds. It was supposed to be the sound of the parachute opening, but Jennifer realized it wasn't the case. After she failed to contact the jumpers via radio and didn't find them at the meeting spot, she called the rescue team. Only in the morning of the following day, the thrill seekers' bodies were spotted from a helicopter. As it turned out, their parachutes weren't even open. It's still unclear exactly what happened. Nevertheless, far from every death caused by falling in Yosemite Park happened because of extreme sports. The overwhelming majority of the victims were regular tourists who just wanted to get a nice photo. It was likely this that killed a young married couple whose bodies were spotted by tourists. On October 25, 2018, 245 meters below Taft Point, it's unclear exactly what caused the tragedy. We only know that before their death, the couple had consumed alcoholic beverages. But there are other dangers in Yosemite. The park boasts countless rivers, over 2,000 lakes, and over 25 waterfalls, and they all take the visitors' lives. At the beginning of July of 2023, the artificial Lake Yosemite took the life of 16-year-old Brandon Mendez. It happened even though the lake was specifically equipped for recreation, and the boy was there with his family. Moreover, a year before this accident, two local guys died at the same spot. The passerby noticed the men and tried to save them, but failed. Waterfall accidents happen in Yosemite as well. In July of 2011, Vernal Fall took three lives at once. On that day, the visitors climbed over a safety railing in search of a better view. Two of them slipped and fell into the water. In an attempt to help his friends, another man got trapped, and eventually, the three of them were swept from the height of 97 meters. Two bodies were located in a few weeks, and the last one took five months to be found. It got carried away for almost a kilometer downstream, and bad weather, as well as poor access to the territory, complicated the search. Only when the water level in the river dropped did the rescuers manage to reach the spot where the body lay. Nevertheless, Yosemite has another ruthless way of killing you, by stoning you to death. Starting from 1857 until today, over 1,000 rockfalls have been recorded in Yosemite. The biggest one happened in July of 1996. On that evening, for no apparent reason, two giant rocks fell off the slopes of Glacier Point, weighing 90,000 tons and having around 30,000 cubic meters in volume. It's like 2,000 SUVs simultaneously hit the bottom of the valley. But the most ruin was caused not by the rockfall, but by the resulting shockwave, 
wind with the speed of 450 kilometers per hour, which can be equated to a Category 5 hurricane, uprooted approximately 1,000 trees and demolished the nearby buildings. After the rockfall, a thick cloud of dust covered the neighboring county, paralyzing its life for a few hours. We only know of one casualty in this incident, but no one can be sure that the rocks haven't buried someone else under. But even if Yosemite Park visitors manage to evade the deadly traps mentioned above, their safety is still not guaranteed, as danger lurks under literally every stone in this park. A man named Kyle Dickman experienced it personally. In June of 2018, the man, accompanied by his relatives, wife, and young son, went hiking in Yosemite, near Forista Falls. The family stopped to eat and have a little rest. Around noon, Dickman felt something touch his right ankle and was horrified to see a rattlesnake by his side. He went unconscious at the sight. After coming around a few minutes later, Dickman realized the snake had bitten him. The man suffered from vomiting and, later, diarrhea. Kyle's condition was so bad he couldn't stand up on his feet. His chances of survival depended on how fast he would receive the antidote. But Dickman's luck turned its back on him in the most horrible way. There was no cell phone connection at the spot. So Kyle's brother, Garrett, ran to look for a place from which he'd be able to call the ambulance and rush toward the medics to show them the way. But as it turned out, the day before, a wildfire had destroyed the only bridge that led to wounded Kyle. So the ambulance could not pass. Meanwhile, Dickman's condition kept deteriorating and he asked his wife to take their son as far away as possible because he didn't want the boy to see his father die. Kyle's only hope was a medical helicopter but due to the peculiarities of the landscape, it couldn't reach the place where the Dickmans were. So first, a smaller helicopter with a hoist and a doctor on board was dispatched. The doctor was supposed to have the antidote, but it turned out the medication stock had already been used up and a new supply hadn't been shipped yet. Only at 4.30 p.m., after four and a half hours, a helicopter with a hoist managed to get Kyle out of the park and another helicopter took him to the hospital but it took him weeks to be able to stand on his feet and $450,000 to get back to health. Dickman's mere survival is a miracle. At the same time, the deadliest animal in Yosemite Park, unexpectedly, the deer. The park bans visitors from approaching the animals, let alone feeding them. But people still break these rules due to the so-called Bambi syndrome. People believe deer to be adorable creatures, like in animated films, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Every year, these animals attack people who try to come too close to them. That's what happened in November of 2021, when a deer hit a woman who wanted to feed it. The lady was lucky to get away with a deep cut on her arm and bruises on her chest. Nevertheless, the locals tell a chilling story about what happened in 1977. Then, a deer attacked a five-year-old boy because the child had run out of treats he'd been feeding the animal. The boy died from injuries sustained. And if for a second, you felt like we've listed all of Yosemite's dangers. You were mistaken. People died in this park due to unforeseen reasons, and sometimes even seemingly without them. One of such cases happened in 2012. At the beginning of summer, a married couple stayed for a vacation in Curry Village. It's the most popular and economical residential neighborhood in Yosemite. After spending a few days in the park, the couple continued their life as usual. But suddenly, they both fell ill. They suffered from excruciating fever, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle pain, and cough. At the end of the summer, the husband died. It turned out the couple had contracted a rare orthohantavirus. It is most often carried by rodents, and getting rid of them in Yosemite Park's wild nature is impossible. There were two more recorded cases of orthohantavirus infection on the park's premises in 2000 and 2010. Nevertheless, no one died then. Overall, in 30 years after the virus's discovery, only 60 infection cases happened in California. This virus has no cure, and around a third of the infected people die. But orthohantavirus has caused only one of the known 1,300 casualties in Yosemite, and not all of them can be blamed on wild animals or the whims of nature. Yosemite's most horrifying story happened in 1999. On February 14th, an American woman named Carol Sund her teenage daughter, Julie, and her friend, Sylvina, came to Yosemite Park on a holiday. The following day, they went on a hike and disappeared. What happened later shocked the entire America. Nothing suspicious was found in the woman's hotel room, so the police and the volunteers searched for them in the park and its vicinity. 
a whole month had passed before in the nearby town of Modesto, Carol's wallet was found. Following this, the investigation involved the FBI, and it became clear it was no ordinary disappearance. The investigators checked over a thousand leads, but there was no progress in the case until on March 18th, they found a burned car in which the woman had arrived. The worst fears came true when the investigators opened the trunk to see two bodies. Forensic tests showed the deceased to have been Carol Sund and Sylvina Peloso, but the body of Carol's daughter, Julia, wasn't there. The investigators understood the killer had to be a local since the car was hidden near an abandoned highway that almost no one used. In the following weeks, a few suspects who lived nearby were arrested, but they all had to be released upon interrogation. After that, another murder happened in July. A local woman named Joy Ruth Armstrong was found decapitated near the camping ground where she lived. Her head was in the stream from which she and her friends took drinking water. Just two days later, the FBI stated they had detained the suspect. It turned out to be 37-year-old Carrie Stainer. He was an employee at the motel where the first three victims had stayed. The investigators confiscated the man's backpack and searched his van and apartment where they found proof of his involvement in the crimes. Still, in the meantime, Stainer ran away, but the workers of a nearby commune recognized the wanted criminal and called the FBI. On the way to the interrogation, Stainer confessed to the murder of Joy Armstrong and later, three other crimes. He gave a recount of sexual violence against all of the victims and declaring his love to Julia before murdering her. Moreover, the killer asked to contact Hollywood producers so they would make a movie about him like they did about his little brother. As it turned out, his brother, Stephen, was kidnapped by a child molester and kept in captivity for eight years until he managed to escape with another victim. There have been attempts to declare Carrie Stainer insane, claiming that his brother's tragedy had made him lose his mind. Yet the man was still sentenced to execution, for which he's waiting to this day. Still, what if a serial killer is not the worst thing that has happened in the history of Yosemite? The thing is, this park holds the first place in the number of missing people in the entire USA. On average, around 40 people never return from the park per year, and very often they seem to evaporate leaving no trace. One of the most bizarre disappearances happened back in 1981. Then, a group of seven people went on a horseback trip to a beautiful place called Sunrise Meadows. In the group, there was a 14-year-old girl named Stacy Ares. When the group set up camp, the girl decided to explore the surroundings and take a few photos. Stacy was accompanied by the group's oldest member, Gerald Stewart. But soon, the man got tired and sat down to have some rest. Family and friends were watching Stacy and Gerald from the cottage until the girl went behind the nearby trees. She hadn't been seen since. Hundreds of people, dogs, and helicopters participated in the search for Stacy Ares, but there were no traces, apart from her camera lens lying near the path. But there was nothing else. No signs of struggle, an animal attack, or even the girl's shoe print. Furthermore, Stacy vanished right by the camp, in an area with many tracks, signposts, and tourists. It's unlikely that the girl was able to disappear in literal seconds. She seemed to just have vanished into thin air. And there are countless similar stories of people going missing in Yosemite. According to the official statistics, 33 people have gone missing in the park. The first such case was recorded back in 1909. And the last person to have gone missing in Yosemite Park is believed to be a hiker named Peter Jackson. On September 17th, 2016, he texted his son that he was headed for Yosemite and no one had heard from him ever since. Some believe that strange disappearances in the park may be connected with things that are much more terrifying than even killers. A former policeman, David Politis, who used to work near Yosemite, started investigating a wave of inexplicable vanishings in America's national parks. Right away, he noticed that most of these cases happened in Yosemite. More than that, it was mostly the elderly and children who went missing. So, if someone is responsible for these kidnappings, they pick the weaker victims. Furthermore, people often disappeared near blueberry bushes. Could something be lurking in the thickets and kidnapping people when they approach to eat some berries? There's evidence proving this. Some of the victims were found so far in the mountains or the forest that they physically could not have gotten there. In addition, often, they weren't wearing any shoes or outer clothes but there was not a single scratch or mark on their bodies from sharp branches and rocks. It's like someone or something had kidnapped the people and whisked them away. 
and the indigenous locals believe it can be human-eating monsters called Wendigo. They are described as tall, lanky creatures with deep-set or glowing eyes, sharp yellow fangs and claws, and deer horns. But according to local beliefs, these aren't the only monsters who live in the Yosemite woods. The legends say that for a long time, local Indian tribes were terrorized by creatures named Siatics. These are hairy humanoid beasts around two and a half meters tall, who are supposedly able to hypnotize their victims. And in 2004, a similar creature was spotted by a local nature conservationist, although he called it Bigfoot. A young park employee named Rob set up camp in the Tuolumne Meadows. The man was getting ready to sleep when he heard something big run down the hill. He realized he wasn't going to outrun a wild animal, so he got out of the tent and screamed to scare it away. But he was met with a terrifying bellow of a humanoid creature covered with thick black fur, standing beside him on its two feet. The guy got lucky because the beast simply ran away. Later, the local elders told Rob that inexplicable phenomenon happened in the area so often that none of them were even paying attention anymore. But what if it's exactly the mysterious creatures who are responsible for the disappearances of people in the park? Because apart from Wendigo and Bigfoots, it is reportedly inhabited by the pet of Satan. That's how a local preacher called a mystical creature known around Yosemite as the wolf ape. It's described as a morbid looking creature with long fur, the face of a baboon, and human-like limbs. The local Indian tribes mention the wolf ape, but they say that in the 50s, a church minister supposedly shot such a creature and hung it on his church. But later, he himself fell victim to a cruel murder. His body was so badly mutilated that he was unrecognizable. A whole pack of wolf apes reportedly crossed paths in Yosemite with a famous photographer, Ansel Adams. However, he did not take a photo of them for some reason. On another occasion, this creature broke into a school classroom and tried to steal the children's lunches, scaring everyone to death. And recently, two tourists were chased by a wolf ape near a cemetery. The terrified people were rescued by a man who was passing by accident. If such beasts really live in the Yosemite woods, they must have taken many human lives. But there may be another explanation for the mystical disappearances of park visitors, and that is the Nightcrawler. It's something that has no logical explanation and looks like a walking pair of pants. A nightcrawler was caught on camera in the town of Fresno, not far from Yosemite, in 2007. It looked like a pair of long legs covered with light white fabric. It has a head, but no trunks or limbs. In 2011, a pair of these creatures was filmed in the park premises. No one, apart from the area's indigenous people, can explain what exactly is a nightcrawler. Yet the legends of the local tribes have mentioned these creatures for centuries. They are reportedly a peaceful alien race who have arrived on Earth to restore the connection between humans and nature. But who knows what happened to those who accidentally bumped into them in the woods at night. Of course, all of these stories sound insane. But the truth is that in all U.S. national parks, there are records of people going missing and various mystical creatures appearing all the time. It's believed that over 1,600 visitors have disappeared without a trace in the U.S. conservation areas. But can human carelessness and wild nature be the only culprits? Or is there something we still don't know about? What do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments, hit the like and the subscribe buttons, and don't go missing in national parks, since we love our viewers.